There are a lot of thoughts and opinions out there on coding boot camps these days and whether or not they're worth it. I took Deb Bowen's iOS course in February of 2020. So in this video, I'm gonna do a full review of that course and then share some thoughts on whether or not I thought it was worth it for myself. Welcome to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Dave. And on this channel, I share tips and tactics to help aspiring iOS developers as well as share some experiences from my own journey into iOS development. The goal of this video is to help anybody who's considering attending Dev Mountain's iOS program specifically, but also to help anyone who may just be interested in learning more about what a coding bootcamp looks like. So I'm gonna be talking about how the course is structured, the curriculum, the pace, the outcomes team, and then wrap it up with whether or not I thought it was all worth it. You guys can see that this is a little bit longer of a video, and that's because I know when I was considering this, I would have really appreciated hearing some details from a past student's perspective, but I couldn't find much out there. So my hope is that this is helpful to a couple of you guys considering it. And before jumping in, if you guys wanna see who I think is best suited to attend a coding bootcamp, you can check out my last video here or by clicking the link in the description. And finally, this is my honest review. None of these opinions are being paid for in any way, and I don't currently have an affiliation with Deb Mountain. With that out of the way though, let's jump on in. Starting off with the structure and curriculum, Dev Mountain is 13 weeks long, but the middle week is off. So there's only 12 weeks of full instruction and they start every seven weeks. So at any given point, there's always two cohorts that are running. The first half is six weeks of hands-on instruction and each week has its own category, but they do kind of build on each other as the weeks progress. The way that a given day is structured is that you start at 9 a.m. Mountain Time, and that's because the program is run out of Utah. And you'll always start with a stretch problem working with the Swift language, and you'll work on that by yourself for a bit before going over the solutions together as a class. And from there, the instructor will walk the class through a guided project and the students will be coding it uh, themselves on their own machine, which is something that is really helpful in having the topic set in. And then after the morning lesson, you'll have a break for lunch and then go into the afternoon projects. And here you're assigned a partner, but instead of uh, following an instructor, you're kind of given a loose set of instructions of what you need to do for the project. And so it's more up to you and your partner to work together and see if you can complete it. And multiple instructors are always available throughout the day to answer questions, but that project will typically take you up until about 5 p.m., at which point you have pre-class work, which is just videos that you have to watch before the next morning's class starts. Depending on the day, the videos could be an hour and a half up to three hours, and they will typically start by introducing a new concept or a new topic and then walk you through a completed project that uses those topics. And then the next morning's lesson that you code following the instructor is usually the same or a very similar project that you watch from the video. And I thought that this was a great way for me to learn. The reasoning behind it is to kind of expose you to a topic the night before, and then you have time to sleep on it. That way, when you're encountering it in the morning, it's not the very first time that you're seeing or learning about it with the hope being that it's able to kind of set in more that way. And then it's basically just repeat that until Friday each week, at which point you have an assessment over that week's material. And you need to get an 80% or above on every assessment in order to graduate, but you're able to take them as many times as you need to. And then there's nothing that they require over the weekend. However, they do have an optional Saturday morning review session. And I think I went to most of those just because I saw it as a way that I can maximize my time during the course. But other than that, you can kind of just rest and reset and get ready for the next week. And so that's the first six weeks. There's really not a whole lot that I would change about it. I think that the instructors are great. They know their stuff really well. And for the most part, they're really responsive and helpful. I think that the pace has a good middle ground of being fast enough to get through all the material that's necessary to fit into those six weeks but also slow enough so that most people in the class are able to keep up. I think in most boot camps, there's gonna be some people that maybe struggle a bit to keep up with the pace, but Dev Mountain does a good job of being flexible with those people. And up until a certain point in the course, they actually let you defer to the next cohort at no extra cost. Uh, if that seems to be kind of the best solution for an individual. And then after the first six weeks, you get a week off and they recommend that you kind of rest and recover, do what you need to do to get ready for the second half, but that it's also good to start some work on your personal portfolio project during that time. The way that the last six weeks is broken down is two weeks of it is dedicated to that personal project where you get to come up with your own idea. And then four weeks is dedicated to a group project that you're assigned. And so the idea here is that students are kind of taking what they've learned from the first six weeks, 
while also learning new things as it applies to the projects that they're working on with the goal of having two apps published on the App Store by the time that they graduate. And I totally agree with this. I think it's a really important aspect of programming to be able to learn new things that you've never done before and implement it yourself without an instructor telling you exactly how to do it, which is basically gonna be the rest of your life if you do decide to go into programming. And then for the group project, you will get assigned to a team with a couple other iOS developers. They give you kind of a dedicated mock project manager. And then Deb Mountain also has a user experience and design course. And so they'll pair you with some students from there who will create the mockups and kind of design the, the look of the app for you. And all that does sound really great in theory, but from my perspective, the general consensus was that the group projects are just far too ambitious for a group of three essentially brand new iOS developers to complete within a given four week period. So my critique here is just that if half or maybe even over half of the group projects never turn into completed projects, then perhaps reducing the scope of those projects so that more students have a better shot at completing them might be a better thing overall. Having apps on the App Store isn't something by itself that's gonna get you a job, but they are one of the best ways that a new iOS developer who's trying to land their first job can compensate for their lack of experience. To give you an idea from my cohort, only me and one other person got our personal apps published before graduation out of a group of 12. And I don't think that a single group project got completed until after the course, but I know that it's not uncommon at all for the group projects to just get completely abandoned as soon as people leave the program. And then in addition to reducing the scope of the group projects, I think it would be helpful if instructors were a little bit more involved in the direction, both on the personal projects and the group projects with things like progress check-ins and then advice on overall direction every couple of days. And they would always do a great job of answering targeted questions that you would ask, but you can always answer a specific technical question without having much insight into the overall project and how it's progressing. Now, granted, some groups like mine did have a project manager that was an instructor from the design course, and so they really didn't have any insight or knowledge into the development side of things. And so those groups are probably gonna be a little bit more affected than groups that have an iOS instructor that is assigned as their project manager. And I definitely learned a ton from the group project that I was able to take with me beyond the bootcamp. So by no means was it a waste. I just think that overall less scope and a little bit more guidance would be a good thing. And so wrapping up the structure and curriculum, I think that I was able to leave Dev Mountain with a really solid foundation of knowledge that I was then able to build off of after. And I think that's kind of exactly what the primary role of any coding bootcamp should be. Great job, Dev Mountain. And next up is the outcomes team and job placement. And this is a really interesting one. Dev Mountain, as well as most boot camps, have a team that's dedicated to helping students with general job hunting tactics and kind of preparing them to be able to start applying to jobs. So what that looked like is in the second half of the course, you would start to attend uh, group sessions that would cover things like how to prepare for an interview, uh, job hunting tactics, getting a LinkedIn page set up, getting your resume pulled together. And so that's really good. I think it's uh, a needed thing just because there are gonna be some students that are maybe coming right out of high school or don't have a lot of experience when it comes to searching for jobs and things like that. Um, for me personally, I had been in the workforce for about five years at that point. So I don't think that I really took anything new or, or learned much from those sessions, um, having already had a, a decent understanding of just kind of job hunting best practices and, and things like that. Now, one pretty major thing that I think could be improved with the outcomes team is their overall messaging and communication. I think a lot of students end up getting the perception that um, the outcomes team is just gonna hand them a job and then students are gonna be upset when that turns out not to be the case. And so I just think that they came in a little bit too hot when it comes to talking about things like what they can do to line up interviews for you or uh, getting you access to job listings before they are publicly available um, and kind of how big that their network of companies is that is looking to hire. And so of course, all of that does sound very enticing to students who are kind of banking on getting a job, but in reality, all the outcomes team can really do is support a student in their own efforts, but it's still up to the actual student to uh, get a job and there's probably very very few cases where a student is actually just going to be handed a job They do have connections with some companies, but those are pretty restricted to companies in Utah and 
from what I've seen, the majority of those roles are for web developers and there's very little in terms of iOS development. And so if you're not wanting to live in Utah, it's not really gonna help you that much. And from my experience, pretty much all the jobs that they would share with alum were essentially just publicly available listings that you would be coming across if you were searching on your own. And so I do think that it's partly up to the students to be a little bit more aware of having proper expectations that this team just exists to support their own efforts. But this would probably be helped if the outcomes team maybe toned down a little bit their, their confidence level of, of how easy it's gonna be for everyone there to get a job. And so wrapping up here with the cost, pre-COVID Dev Mountain cost $10,900, which did include housing. Right now on their website, they list an online course for 7,900 bucks and an in-person one for 9,900. However, I'm not sure if that includes housing or if it's just for people who are, are in the area, but regardless, was it worth the cost for me? For just the information, I would say definitely not. The, the information is out there, thank you internet, and you can essentially learn all the fundamentals for free. But a bootcamp isn't just about access to information. And what made Dev Mountain worth it for my individual case was the environment, the structure, the accountability, and the access to instructors. And by having access to those four things for 13 weeks straight, I think that I got so much further in the boot camp than I would have if I was trying to learn iOS just on my own. If you're an absolute machine when it comes to discipline and motivation, then sure, you can learn all the fundamentals on your own pretty much for free. And I would even say I have pretty good motivation and discipline when it comes to these types of things, but for me, a boot camp was a really good way to say, even just mentally, okay, you know, I'm doing this, I don't have a plan B, I need to make this work, and this isn't just something that I'm casually trying out to see how it goes. Now, keep in mind that this is just my own assessment from my own life circumstances, but that there are tons of variables that go into a simple question of, is something worth it or not? But being where I am now and kind of knowing what I know now, if I had to go back and start to break into iOS from scratch again, I would choose a bootcamp 10 out of 10 times, and I would also choose Dev Mountain because they're regarded as having the top iOS program um, in the States, and at the time was the only program that was offering an in-person course. In closing, I think that a big part of it is just having proper expectations, and I say it all the time, but just attending and graduating a coding bootcamp isn't something that's gonna guarantee you're gonna land a job. Uh, but it's just one step in your journey that's supposed to give you a solid foundation of knowledge that you can then take and build off of on your own. So that's been my review of Dev Mountain's iOS program. I hope that this video was helpful if you are considering attending it yourself. If it was, give the video a like, or if you want my opinion on anything else regarding this program, go ahead and leave a question in the comments and I'll be sure to reply. And finally, my next video is gonna be the entire story from how I started getting into iOS and then every single step that I took until I landed my first job. So if you wanna see that and more iOS content, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.